on World Now. We start off in the United States where reactions have continued to trail the verdict of former uh, President Donald Trump. Donald Trump has been found guilty on all counts in his historic New York criminal trial. This has made him the first former sitting president to be convicted of a crime as he makes a bid to return to the White House. We have more this details in the reports. Donald Trump has lashed out after being convicted on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in his historic criminal trial in New York. The verdict comes as he campaigns to defeat Joe Biden in November's election. Mr. Trump, in reaction, has called the verdict a disgrace. A rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA and the whole thing. We didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man. And it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our Constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. It is the first time a former or serving U.S. president has been convicted of a crime. He's due to be sentenced on July 11 as the ex-president could face prison, but legal experts say a fine more likely. A panel of 12 Manhattan jurors unanimously convicted him. The jury responsible for the verdict have been commended. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg gave the commendation during a presser. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the jury for its service. Uh, jurors perform a fundamental civic duty. Their service is literally the cornerstone of our judicial system. We should all uh, be thankful for the careful attention uh, that this jury paid to the evidence and the law um, and their time and commitment over these past several weeks. Over a six-week trial, the court heard from 22 witnesses, including Stormy Daniels, whose alleged sexual encounter with Mr. Trump was at the center of, the ca of this case. The former president was accused of having concealed a payment to buy the silence of Ms. Daniels, a former adult film star, in the final days of his 2016 election campaign. Prosecutors had argued that by approving a scheme to disguise the money as legal expenses, Trump broke election law. So far, residents of the United States of America have reacted to the conviction of former U.S. President Donald Trump. While some have celebrated this decision, others are still in support of Donald Trump and his bid to run for U.S. President. I did not think that people would have followed through. I mean, it seems like he's gotten off and everything else, so I assumed that he would get off on of this. I'm happy that they convicted him because, you know, he's not above the, the law. And if I was to behave the way he did during the trial, they would have threw me out. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Like I say, I'm an old 60s person, so what do I know? But I hope, I hope this will be the end of Donald Trump for the United States. I'm a delegate at the GOP convention. Regardless of what happens at his sentencing, I will be nominating and voting for President Trump as the next president of the United States. The verdict comes just days before the start of the Republican National Convention, when Donald Trump is due to be confirmed as the party's candidate to face Joe Biden, the Democratic incumbent in November. Mr. Trump can still run, despite the convictions. Reports say Donald Trump will give a press conference from Trump Tower in New York later today. Diplomat and resident, School of International Service, American University, Elway, joins me to discuss this uh, historic occurrence in the United States. Good to have you join us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, Donald Trump uh, has been convicted of a Class E felony, which is uh, punishable by a fine, uh, probation, or up to four years in prison. Did you foresee this, this uh, judgment? And how likely is it for him to be incarcerated? Well, I think the evidence was very strong as presented. And of course, we had uh, coverage on the news channels constantly every day and in the evenings. 
So a lot of people knew that there was a good deal of evidence. What we weren't sure of is if there would be one or two people on the jury that would not be uh, agreed with the rest of them. But it, it turned out that they were able to reach a consensus pretty quickly for a jury trial. Um, so I think it, it is a clear sign that this process worked smoothly and that it is following the process of rule of law that we've set up in the United States. There will be an opportunity, there is an opportunity now for uh, Mr. Trump to appeal this finding. Well, it, it's unlikely that this will happen, but uh, Donald Trump had spent a considerable time, you know, insulting the judge who will decide uh, the sentence for this case. Uh, uh, what are the factors that you believe uh, the jury will take into consideration uh, while deciding his sentence? Well, I think the judge will look at his past record, will look at the crimes, and he has a good deal of leeway. He could give probation. He could have house arrest. He could uh, ask for a term in jail. Most of the discussion right now is focused on the fact that he would be unlikely to be sentenced to a period in jail, given that this is his first conviction on this kind of crime. And, and that's often what happens in other similar cases. Of course, in similar cases, you're not looking at a former president of the United States. This is completely unique. And, and many have also raised uh, the issue of age and uh, the fact that it is a first time of, uh, offender as one of the factors that will be considered in this case. But then, uh, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden have sort of had an agreement that November will determine uh, the political verdict. How do you see the outcome of this sentencing uh, affecting the chances of the Republican nominee in November? Well, I think a lot of people are, are speculating on that right now. There are clearly many people who were going to stay with Donald Trump or Joe Biden no matter what happened in the outcome of this case. But what we're really looking at are those voters who were undecided, those voters who have not voted for Donald Trump before, but were telling pollsters that they were open to voting for them. And that includes a number of younger voters, a number of, uh, of those of, of various ethnic and racial backgrounds. And so there's going to be very careful scrutiny now going forward. And both campaigns, of course, will be trying to work particularly on those voters as distinguished from their core base. Because what we're really talking about are those potentially fluid voters between the two camps. Mm. And, and this is not the end uh, for, for, for Trump. He's also been found uh, guilty in the Manhattan uh, case. He's been found guilty in the New York case. Uh, but there, there are also other uh, cases pending, uh, the state case in Georgia. And also uh, another federal case, uh, one regarding the subverting of the election uh, in January and others having to, to do with holding classified documents. It's not expected that any of these cases will proceed to trial before election day. Uh, there are concerns that uh, this will sort of uh, affect the outcome of the case. If he becomes uh, the president, he could as well appoint an attorney general to dismiss the case or, or utilize a self-pardon. What do you make of this? Well, I think it's certainly true that if you were elected and became president, you would have a tremendous amount of leverage, first to dismiss all of the federal charges, and then even to put pressure on the state charges, or the state case that is still going forward in Georgia. Then there are some related cases, not with him as a named uh, defendant, but a number of his associates uh, being accused of electoral um, trying to appoint fake electors in the last elections. So those could go forward as state cases, but as president, he would have a lot of leverage to uh, press that they be dismissed. Uh, not certainty, but I'm sure uh, he could generate a good deal of pressure on those cases. And we've seen uh, President, uh, former President Trump pointing repeatedly at uh, the Biden administration there are questions about the credibility of uh, the witnesses, uh, Stormy Daniels and uh, Michael Cohen. Uh, do they come about uh, better as uh, witnesses, uh, uh, one being a convicted felon and the other being 
uh, a, a porn star? Does, does this stand up here? Well, in many cases, of course, your witnesses are people who've had flaws in their lives before and sometimes have been convicted. And that's often how prosecutors in the United States bring other, others accused of crime um, to a conviction. They have accomplices who testify. So this happens regularly in normal cases. Now, this is not a normal case. It has large political significance, which is why you have such politicized groups of people looking at this. And that's also why a vast majority of Americans will not switch their opinions just because of the outcome of this case. But again, we're looking at that small slice of the American electorate who think, do we really want a convicted felon to be a president of the United States? And what does, the, what does this conviction and all the sordid details tell us about this individual that we might be having the opportunity to vote for again or to vote for his opponent. And so we'll be looking in the weeks ahead to see how people are absorbing this. There are many people in the United States that were not paying close detailed attention to this case. Mm. They now have the opportunity to absorb what that evidence was. And the Hunter Biden trial also starts uh, next week. Do you see this gathering as much attention as uh, this Trump trial did? Well, I think it will have a good deal of attention, but again, it's not really focused on Joe Biden, it's focused on his son. Um, the Biden family have admitted that the son had a number of crises during his life, and uh, that's, that, that's what he's being questioned about now. So I think we'll see how it plays out. It will get a lot of attention in conservative media, and they will try to play this up as uh, saying negative things about the president. But so far, they have not been able to uncover evidence in a number of different investigations that actually involves Joe Biden in the accusations of wrongdoing that have been uh, alleged. Right, Diplomat in Residence School of International Service, American University, L. Wayne. Thank you for joining us on the world now. Thank you for inviting me.